All right, so today I'm reviewing the 172 scale Chinook helicopter by Forces of Valor. And this is in die cast. And the thing I love about Forces of Valor is one, you can actually still purchase them today. And if you want one of these, check the video link in the description below. I'll actually post a link of where you can get them. And also the details. I mean, they put so many details on the packaging. And as a collector, somebody who reviews these models, I love details. I mean, I, I say it probably a thousand times in my videos. So sorry if you get annoyed by that, but details, details, details. <laughs> I'm all about the details. Okay, so this is the Canadian Air Force UN version, and they do make a lot of other paint schemes and different models. So first thing we open up, we have instructions there. Okay, so here's a better look at the background packaging. You can see there, there's actually the real Canadian Air Force Chinook helicopters they took pictures of. Pretty cool. Okay, so I'm gonna open up the instructions here. And again, they do a pretty good job with the instructions too. Very detailed, they use color coordination as well. And with their models, you can use glue, um, especially in some of these spots, they'll tell you you actually have to down here, for example. Um, and you don't have to install those, they're optional, but they show you where to glue them and whatnot if you want to. So in the packaging, we have the rotor blades, the two sets. And then we also have an accessories pack which has the optional accessories we'll get to here. And I love that it comes with a stand because this helicopter looks really good in the air, so you have the option to have it in the air or on the base. And here are the rotor blades. Comes with two sets of three. And right off the bat, you can see the base, the details, it looks like a runway. And then here's the other side. And the back bay door does open and close. Okay, so in the accessories pack, we have a rail here, and this rail actually goes right here, and there's some holes here I'll show you in a little bit when I install it, but you will need some glue for that to keep it on. You can put it on and it'll be fine, but the glue just keeps it in place, and with these models, they're actually really detailed, and so the little pieces really need to be stuck in with some glue. And here's some antenna. It comes with two antenna that go into the front here, and then it also comes with these plugs, and these plugs just cover up the screw holes. And these shorter screws, when you remove the base, if you want to put it on this stand, you'll need to actually put those shorter screws to hold the die cast bottom onto the top. Okay, so to remove the helicopter from the base, you have these four screws right here. And then you have three other screws on the bottom that you're gonna to need to remove. And you need to be careful because there are fragile antenna like on the bottom here, and then also the landing gear. All right, I need a smaller screwdriver for these. And that comes off like that. And here's what it looks like underneath. Okay, so the thing about this model is the bottom part is the only part that's die cast, the base. The top itself is actually plastic. I mean, it feels good and it looks really good, but that's just something to note. The whole thing is not die cast. So it's definitely not as heavy as you would expect, but it does have some weight to it because of the base that's die cast. Okay, so these other three screws that came with it actually fit inside these little holes here that you remove for the base. So you're gonna wanna put those in. They're smaller. Now we're gonna take these plugs and we're gonna plug them in where the screw holes are. And I like that they include these because it just makes it look better when it's on the stand. So you can't see these screw holes. All right, here's what it looks like with the plugs in. Now, if you're gonna wanna install this on the base or leave this on the base, I probably wouldn't put these plugs in because you're gonna have to take them out to get the screws back on for the base. And doing that, you're probably gonna damage the paint or scratch the paint because these plugs go in pretty flush. So you might be able to get a fingernail around there or something, but don't do it if you plan on leaving this on the base. So to install the railing, you just have these little holes right here in the side of the fuselage and you just line these up with the holes. And it says, like I said, to put glue in there, but I'm gonna try to get it on without glue and just see how it holds. Okay, so I managed to get it on there without glue, 
but I'm probably gonna go back and put glue because you can see it does kind of pop out a little bit. And that is optional. You don't have to put this on there if you don't want to. So the same thing for the antenna here. They are optional, but if you want on the nose here, they have two little holes. And then you have this tab that you push down. And I'm probably gonna have to do this off camera because these are really small and I will need some glue and some tweezers. So I'll do that and I'll get back. Okay, and I actually had to take a little small flathead here to whittle out that hole because the paint, I guess, had kept it just, just tight enough to where the antenna wouldn't fit. So I'm gonna be putting some glue in there too to keep it in there. So this is the CH147F version. And these right here are extra fuel tanks on the side. They actually call them fat fuel tanks. <laughs> Have them on both sides. And it would actually give the Chinook double range. Okay, so another thing this Canadian model had is on the bottom here, you can see this little green looking like a button. That was actually the L3 Westcam MX-15 electro-optical infrared sensor. And it basically allowed them to see at night and low visibility. And this model also came with the AFCS, which is Automatic Flight Control System, which basically would help it fly by itself. Okay, so here are the integrated countermeasures. Here, here, and then on the other side. There, and there. And this one actually had one of the most advanced counter missile systems in the world. Okay, so it's hard to tell in the video, but the rotor blades actually have different notches, uh, some for the front and the rear. So I'm gonna go ahead and install those according to where they go. Okay, so here's what they all look like installed. And they will actually hit each other if you spin them together, like that. And I really like that they included two pilots in these because a lot of these smaller models, they don't include pilots. And these are actually detailed too. They're painted pretty nice. So the cargo door does open and close. And this is also plastic, it is not metal, but it still looks really good quality. And you can see the seats in there, all the details on the side. So lastly for the stand, it just comes in three pieces. You just pop this piece down like this, and it holds in place. And then this top piece goes on like this. To install the stand, you actually slide this part of the stand underneath the wheels, which I like, and then the hole in the back, this slides in there. So the front wheels actually get held in place. So this is what it looks like installed onto the stand. Just be careful because it does not lock onto the stand very well. You can just pick it up like this and it'll come off. But looks good.